If you drop a leaf into a river, where's it gonna go? So hi, I'm Shay Velovic. This is Geometry Topology Today. Today we have Jeremy Van Horn Morris, who's a professor at University of Arkansas here at the beautiful Louisiana State University campus. And he's going to tell us a little bit about this problem. So Jeremy, what happens, what happens to the leaf? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, so if you imagine what's going on, you've got your, your sort of river, you've got your leaf in it. You can, um, you can see that at every given point, you've got, um, or, or as the, as the leaf is moving through, you've got two pieces of information you want to keep track of when you're doing this. You've got the position of the, of the leaf as it's moving along the river, and you've got the um, velocity, the sort of the direction and the speed that it's traveling in. I see. And um, so this is, this is a, uh, an interesting question in, in many different areas, um, but we want to sort of take it and turn it into, uh, or maybe history has taken it and turned it into a question that's more related to topology. And one of the ways this happens, well, if you think about you've got, you've got your, your river here, you've got your leaf flowing through it, you're looking at your point, the point's going to give you sort of two dimensions that, that you, can, you can pick out. So these are like the two sort of dimensions in space, like my x dirt position and my y position. Exactly, yeah. You may be used to thinking about sort of graphs as being, you know, an x and a y. This is all of the points in the x and y plane, and we're thinking about the, the, the point is actually sort of moving around as it can. Um, there's two other directions or, or, or um, uh, pieces of information you want to keep track of, and that's how fast it's moving in the x direction and how fast it's moving in the y direction. And those two things together will give you how fast it's moving in general and the direction in which it's traveling. I see. And it turns out that, that um, really we don't care too much about how fast it's going through its, its paces through here. We really care about which direction it's going to go. That's telling you the general behavior of the, of the leaf and where it's going to end up. So if my leaf is sitting at some particular point in the river, we only care is it traveling this way or this way. Um, that's right, or this way or this way or this way or this way. Yeah, all of those are different directions. Okay. Um, so how does this turn into the type of problem that you study as a mathematician? Well, you can actually sort of uh, keep track of all of this information in one three-dimensional picture. So if you want to remember both position and the direction, you need another parameter that's going to keep track of what's going on. And this parameter and the way that it fits into a three-dimensional picture give you something called a contact structure. So you can translate this, 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 this understanding, uh, or encode it perhaps, is a better way to say this, in, in something called a contact structure. So what is a contact structure? Well, contact structures are, are somewhat complicated. And um, maybe the best way to, to, to look at them is with some very complicated calculus. So we, we as mathematicians like to take very complicated objects and try and build simpler things to understand them. And so the, the tool that I use to understand contact structures is, is a very visual tool called an open book decomposition. All right. Can you show us what an yeah. open book looks like? So the, the, the reason it's called an open book um, is that it, it looks very much like you took a book and you opened it up and you glued the front page to the, the front cover to the back cover and you just see all of the pages sticking out from here. I see. So this is like we had our front, our front cover and our back cover, and we just opened up all of the pages and yeah, so see all it all these, splayed out in front of us. All splayed out. And this is a, a magic book that has an infinite number of pages, and at every direction you've got a page. But um, this is this is going to fill up all of all of three dimensional space here. And um, so I'm supposed to way. imagine that this black curve here is like the z-axis. Yeah, and this our is usual go, picture of three space. Yeah, and this is going to go this on This is forever. filling up the entirety of three space. And these, these, these planes go on forever. They all go out to infinity. Yeah, that's exactly it. All right. So, uh, so, what is the, so what sorts of things can one do with these open books? Ah, well, the, the, the given open book may be not so much. But it turns out that there's, there's a whole bunch of open books that are going to describe your contact structure. And you'd like to understand 
um, the relationship between those open books um, and and how the open book itself can be described, as well as how it's related to the contact structure. So this open book is is sort of easy to to, to understand. Essentially, everything is moving around um, in the sort of circular motion about the z-axis. There's more complicated open books, though. Can you um, draw one for us? Yeah, let's. Well, you could just take this picture here, and we're going to add in. Oh, maybe we will not take this picture here. It starts to get a little messy. We're going to take this picture here, and we're going to add in a little loop around the middle. Now, one thing you noticed about the previous picture was that that all of the all of the the sheets, all of the pages, are coming in to intersect this one curve. Same thing's going to happen here. Now your pages are going to be a little more complicated. They're going to come in, and now they're going to have to twist around. Um, and then you're going to sort of turn and come under. I see. So here it looks like we have two different bindings of our, of our book. Yes, so excellent introduction, introduction of, of the uh, terminology there. So when you close up the open book, the, 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 the binding itself is the thing that all of the pages are going to come out of. So these we call the binding components. And this one now has two components in its binding. And um, again, you, you see that there's some, there's some uh, rotational uh, uh, symmetries about this, that if I spin this around, you can actually fill up everything. And then outside of this little neighborhood in the center, the pages you had before are going to remain the pages. And I see. So this sheet is going to come all the way around just like before. But in the center here, um, we have these little strips that are going to do something similar, I guess? Yeah, they really do just spin around. But they sort of, there are these corkscrews that happen. And if you drag the corkscrew all the way around, it has a, a symmetry, maybe sort of like a ballerina that you see in those sort of music boxes. It's sort of twisting and fills up everything as it goes through. I see. OK, so we want to understand what this is actually doing. So two things I want to, I want to, I want to point out. One is this is really, as a shape, it looks the, exactly the same as this picture here. So is that like if I were to take some scissors and cut along here and untwist this little, this little band? Exactly. So if we take, actually, so we're going to do this. If, we're, if we were to, it's, it's, I don't know, for my, my, my visualization, it's easier to go this way. It's easier to say, if I cut along here and I twist, I can see that I get this picture here. And the idea is going to be that your twisting is going to happen coming around over here and to the back. So uh -huh. this area here really is this area. And then you twist as you come around. OK. So we want to understand the, the dynamical picture on this uh, side of things. If I think about a point, it's going to be pushed around by the, by the open book, and it's going to come back someplace. I see. So it doesn't necessarily just come back to itself? Um, Depending on what we're what we're requiring it to do, um, not necessarily. Now, the description that I gave you before, where um, points are just rotating around in a circle, in that case, they really do come back to the, themselves. Is that back when we we didn't have this second component to our binding? Exactly. Um, when we when we when we try to associate this to a contact structure, we need to make a new kind of dynamics where all of the points on our binding are remaining fixed. So we're going we're gonna to see if we can encode that as, as in, in some sort of dy dynamical picture for the page here. OK, so here's what, here's what we're going to see. We're going to take, take this idea again. Now, let's, let's expand on the idea we just talked about, that if we spin this around, that everything comes back to itself. The only problem with that was that points that are on this binding component here spin all the way around and come back. Now, if we want to fix this, we would sort of think about in a taking these points and sliding them back to where they started. And it turns out that what we really care about is, is a very floppy version of the dynamics here. And it's floppy enough that if I tell you where this curve gets sent to, this arc, um, wherever this gets moved to, that's going to determine the, the, the kind of dynamics that we're interested in when we're talking about the open book. So let's see where that actually goes. Well, before we had it just coming back to where it, it, it started. But now we're going to have to slide it around, all the way back around to, to the, so that this endpoint ends up where it is. So that once we've swept this thing all the way around, in order to have these two points remain fixed, 
this curve is going to have to actually trace some strange path through this blue page. Exactly. And you can, you can realize it by, just on this page, sliding that orange arc all the way around to where it is. So it's actually going to come all the way back. And then you can see it on the, the underside here. Um, and then it's underneath somehow. And then it's going to come back over here. Interesting. Maybe this is a terrible picture, but coming in over here to see. Wow. All right, so over here, that means what you've done is just spun around in a little circle like this. And for our description, this is enough to completely tell us what we need to know about this open book and how it, tell, and, and how it gives us a context structure. So are these the only open books that one encounters when they're trying to study these context structures? No, in fact, there's infinitely many of them. And maybe the next one in the family is this guy here. Um, this is called the trefoil. And the fiber is this guy here. I take these two, these two disks and I glue them together. I attach between them these little twisted bands. See, so kind of like how we added this little band here. Exactly, exactly the same band, yeah. Um, and there's, there's, there are other spaces that we're really interested in that have other contact structures on them. And for them, there are lots of questions. We know, um, we know that there should be open books, that there are open books that, that are on these contact structures. Um, but we don't necessarily know what they are explicitly. Interesting. Well, thank you so much for coming and talking with us. My pleasure. Thank you for watching. <laughs>